buy from pocket, so it's actually easier for us to leverage the EMP between and the EMP that's going to come in the shipyard. John, just, yeah. just have that for a second. Oh, thank you. That's the key thing, Matthew, over there. Right. Want me to start again? <laughs> right. right, so in, Gov in, in the shipyard, uh, BA Systems in Glasgow is the single biggest private employer in the west of Scotland, soon to be the single biggest private employer in the whole of Scotland as the NES site in Falkirk, Grangemouth, appears to be about to close. It's a well-established trade union uh, workplace, certainly with the Blue Collars, where we have a 100% union organisation. I don't suppose everybody can say that, but as you'll probably guess, it's for a reason. So anyway, some years ago, some of my guys started to come to me and say, John, I'm getting a cough, it'll no go away. Or my nose keeps running and I keep sneezing and stuff like that. And you just put that down to the kind of stuff, because those of you that work in heavy industry will know, we just, that's what you work in and that's what you do. But it was becoming so persistent with one of them in particular, who then went on to, 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 to be diagnosed with COPD, that I began to look into it. Now, I had a, I had a young shop steward with me at the time, young Lewis. Uh, he was really quite good on the internet, so we did a couple of internet studies. And what we found was, quite frankly, horrendous. Terribly horrendous. Now, this is before 2017. So what we've done was, we need to get some extra help for our guys. Didn't they understand the science fully, but we did know we had to do something. And the thing that we'd done, and I'll come back to these later in the talk, was we fought, and I mean fought, we didn't get this for nothing, to get our filters improved, right? So we initially had this filter, which you'll all be aware of. Now they come in different shapes, because you've all got different kit. This is a P3, right? This is for the things that you can see, right? This is the things that you can see. This is an activated charcoal filter. This is for the things that you cannot see. How this works is not like this. This is activated charcoal. It's like a, it's like a magnetic field in it. The, the pollution has a different charge and it's attracted to it and it, and it sticks to it and it stops it going in. Uh, and so we thought that was the best that we could get. And indeed, it actually is really quite good. I'll come back to it again with further details. So that was our first move. And then as we began to look into it, all of a sudden, stuff started to come, as you can see, from the uh, World Health Organization. So when the World Health Organization declared weld fume a class one carcinogen in 1917, this was done by their subcommittee called IAR, the International Agency for Research on Cancer. That was then turned into legislation in the UK in 2019. Now, what we're actually talking about here, people, so that I can talk to you about what's going on, is we're talking about particulate matter, 2.5 and less, so that's down to 0 0.1. Now, this is getting right down to molecular size, okay? Uh, now, 2.5, what does it mean to the layman? It means that you can get 250 particles on the breadth of a metre. Right? Oh, sorry, a millimetre. At that size, that stuff becomes inhalable and ingestible. When it gets smaller than that, it can get right into the basic bio biological uh, processes of your cells. So what happens is this. You breathe in the weld fume. And the weld fume, as we've already seen, is cancerous. And everything in that weld fume is cancerous. There are no neutral things in it. All of it is a carcinogen. It's a class one carcinogen. There is no safe level for a carcinogen. That's health and safety legislation. No safe level for a carcinogen. So this stuff gets into your body. And we're talking about these various metals, which I'll just get my wee note up so I can remember what they are. Iron, uh, manganese, uh, nickel, chromium, molybdenum, copper, and those that you do aluminium, aluminium. Right, so not only are these things carcinogens, there are many other effects that go with them. Not least, 
neurotoxic effects, right? So that is the effect your central nervous system in your brain, right? So for steel, it's manganese. Manganese causes a form of industrial Parkinson's disease. It's in every single steel that you weld. It depends on what percentage it will be. Sometimes it's as little as one, but it can be up to four and five percent, depending on the type of steel that it is, right? So an American study that was done some years ago uh, had 886 welders in this study. Uh, all the guys were 45 years of age, and they were all done, they were all tested before they went on, and none of them were showing any signs of Parkinson's disease. Uh, they determined at the end of a 10-year period, no, it was an 8-year period, that 15% of those welders were showing signs of early onset Parkinson's disease. 15% out of 886. If that was a normal cohort from normal population, it would be a fraction of 1%. Let me say that again, a fraction of 1%. Right? So that's an indication of the stuff that we're dealing with. So that's Parkinson's disease. Those of you that use wire torches, MIG, will be aware that it's covered with copper. Copper is associated with a, a neurotoxic conditions. Uh, yeah, this one, I've got it here. Right. Dysregulation of copper homostasis. This is a paper. I can prove it if you want to. Homostasis is normal biological f function has been documented in several neurological diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Huntington's disease. Right? So that's been exposed to copper. You all know that, ni that nickel and chromium are involved in both carcinogens and asthmogens. Stainless steel welding will give you an increased risk of industrial asthma. I, some years ago, was involved in welding a stainless steel boat. Well, it's a stainless steel tanks in the boat. It was for carrying <coughs> concentrated fruit juice. So it was stainless steel tanks. I have industrial asthma. It's well controlled, but I have it. I was never able to prove at that time that I had it because the doctors didn't believe that that kind of stuff happened. But the evidence is there now. So we've got several neurotoxic effects and a carcinogen, right? And it's carcinogens. Now let's talk about the cancers that we're talking about, team. Just follow my track, right? Follow my track and you'll see where it's going. Cancer of the nasal septum, right? Cancer of the throat. Cancer of the esophagus. Cancer of the stomach. Cancer of the bowel. Cancer of the bladder. Cancer of the kidneys. And some evidence for cancer of the liver. So not only are we breathing it in, we're ingesting it. Okay, so see that mildly salty metal taste you sometimes get in your mouth when you're working in the welding shop or you're working with a Yara welder, you may be having your piece during the break and that kind of stuff. You're eating that. You're swallowing it, you're eating it. When it gets into your stomach, it causes irritations in your stomach. In your stomach, the stomach lining is a thing, I'll go back onto this as well, called the epithelial. That's where all the nutrients are taken out of the stomach, get into the body. The bad stuff taken out as well, okay? You're ingesting it. That can lead to irritable bowel syndrome, and it can lead to Crohn's disease. When you breathe it in, this is the way it mostly comes in, not only do you have the lung cancer problem, it gets right into the, to the very depths of your lungs, the place called the alveoli, where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place, and it crosses the barrier. The, the the size of the materials at that point are infinitesimally small. Let me just give you a scale. If one of your lung cells is the size of the planet Earth, the size of this material that's crossing over is the size of a football. Right? Let me just get you that in it again. Planet Earth, football. Crosses over into it and into your body and into the bloodstream. Body is aware of it almost immediately. And you get a rise in blood pressure, hypertension. As this stuff rattles through your bloodstream, it pits and scores the lining of the bloodstream. Now, the lining of the bloodstream is so soft, right, and so smooth that it stops things like 
uh, uh, clots and, and, and uh, blood cells all backing up with each other. But this pits and scores it, and it allows things like cholesterol to adhere to the side of the blood vessel. Can lead to build up of uh, uh, cholesterol plaques, right? Lead to heart conditions. It's well, well documented. Uh, cardiovascular effects of being exposed to, to to welding fume, right? But that's not the only thing it does. It gets into your blood vessels, and it crosses into the cells in your various organs. This is where it's going to get a little bit technical. I'm sorry, but there's no other way I can put it. So it gets into these into the cells and it crosses the cell membrane. Remember, it's tiny, tiny. Crosses into the cell membrane. And in your cell membrane, inside your cell, there are a number of things that it affects. Inside your cell, there's a thing or things called the mitochondria. You get them from your mother. Right? That's how they can trace humanity right back into time to the first eve. You get them from your mother, you only get them from your mother. All higher life forms and plants have them, right? The only cells in your body that don't have them are red blood cells. We'll maybe come back to that later, right? So it gets into them. Now, we are talking about irons. We're talking about aluminium. We're talking about all these metals. Most of these metals are what is called oxygen reactive, right? So they get into the cell, they get into the mitochondria, and it's a bit like getting too rich a mixture in a car in engine. It's just so we can understand it, it burns them out. It kills them. Your cells become dysfunctional and don't work. They don't work effectively when the mitochondria have been attacked, right? And the mitochondria don't get repaired in the cells. And so they cause cell, they cause these cell death. Also, more sinisterly, inside your cell, as you'll know, because you've all done basic biology, there's a double helix where your DNA is stored, right? At the end of that double helix, there are things called the telomeres. They're like the end of, the, the end of your laces. They hold all the, all the genetic material together. And the length of these telomeres determine how long, how, determine how often your cell can divide. And effectively, in the long term, determines how long you're going to live, right? These, these oxygen reactive parts disrupt those telomeres. They shorten them or they damage them. If they shorten them, it means your cell will die earlier. And ultimately, it means that you will die earlier, right? You might get none of these conditions that I've outlined, but your life may be, ex may, may be shortened by it, right? So it either shortens them, causing you overall to, 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 to not live as long as you, you possibly would have been, or it disrupts them and causes, causes breaks in them. And that can lead to the development of tumorous cells, cancers, right? So there we have that particularly. So lung, can, lung cancers, other cancers, and, and, and neurotoxic effects, also, the gases that we are exposed to. The gases and fumes from the welding process itself. So what we're we talking about, right? So we're talking about carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and others. The fluorides from the fluxes that you're welding with, either by rods or by flux core, are, are, uh, are produced from the, fr fr from the flux. The fluorides are acidic. They get breathed in by you and they go onto the level, uh, they go onto the surface of your, 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 your lungs, the watery surface of your lungs, and they turn to a mild form of, 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 of acid. All of these things, Repress the immune system in your lungs. Our lungs are covered by an army of white cells, T cells that kill bacteria and funguses and viruses, right? And cells called macrophages, which literally means in Greek or ancient Greek, big eaters, which eat all that stuff, right? Clean them up. 
They, they're always working in your lungs. That's your first and last line of defense. Well, first line of defense anyway. If they have been constantly exposed to that level of fuming dust, you get immune suppression, which means that your lungs are more likely, more likely to contract a flu, a bronchitis, a COPD, an emphysema, or any number of different lung conditions that are not necessarily cancerous. There's 154 welders die every year in Britain that we know of, right, with the effects of lung uh, weld fume. Cancer to the lungs. The number of welders and allied trades who are getting lung conditions due to this is massively greater. Now let me tell you what that means for you. It means that for the guys that I worked with up until recently, the welders and, 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 the, and the other boilermakers and the Clyde, the average age of death, 71 to 75. And I'll bet that that's not that different for most of you. 71 is 75. And remember, you're retired now at 66, nearly 67. Unfortunately, these guys just don't go out like a light bulb, right? Usually what happens the last two to three years of their lives, very many of them will have contracted some chronic lung condition which means they spend the last two to three years of their lives with a bottle at the side of the chair, and I don't, mean a, I don't mean a whiskey bottle, an oxygen bottle at the side of the chair watching loose women as their life fades away. Right? So that's what we are talking about here. I believe that we have uncovered a condition or a set of conditions which will rival asbestosis and its impactfulness on the men and women that we work with. And I think we need to be aware of that and we need to get that out to them. But not only is this a case that's something that we need to take cognizance of in the industrial workplace, I must be frank, and this is where I might just get a little bit, a uh, wee bit off track. <coughs> ambient air pollution in the UK is pretty bad. So ambient air pollution is what's just out there, right? So we're talking about in the world today, there are 235 million people who have asthma. The World Health Organization reckons that between 9 and 12 million people's deaths are attributed to atmospheric pollutants. Public Health England, which is your place, right, estimate that between 28 to 32,000 deaths a year are attributed to ambient air pollution. Right? Every year in the in UK, there are 13,000 people made. made ill and die by their work, and it's a lung disease. For every death at work, 117 people are made ill by their work. We work at greater levels of industrial uh, pollutants and in industry than the, the, average, the, average, uh, the average Joe in the street, or Josephine in the street. We need to start doing something about this. We need, we need our guys to know that this is happening to them, and we need to try and stop it. Now, it's quite a stark story I've told you. Quite depressing. But actually, the, the solutions to it are really, really simple. The solutions to it as, is, the answer to pollution is dilution. We have to get that air out of the workplace. We need it to be filtered, and we need it to, it to be treated as the carcinogen toxic waste that it is, right? So, this now is, in my opinion, our last line of defence, not our first line of defence, right? So, what we've done, and I have to be frank with you, and I'm blowing my trumpet and I'm doing it, the trade unions changed the groundwork in the, in the yards. You're going to have to do it. The Labour Party's not going to do it for you. The Liberals are going to do it for you. Nobody is going to come to help the working man or woman. We have to date ourselves, right? So, we, through a period of time and taking a certain amount of limited industrial action, made our company change our extraction system. We call it the windy ship, right? 
Principally, it's on the boat. Now, you know what a boat is. It's really basically a, just a gigantic pipe full of, full of spaces, right? So what we've done was we got a system going, and if anybody's interested in this, get them to phone BE Systems, and they will give them the plan for it because they promised us that they would, right? And you, you'll get it free of charge, right? So we have 10 air changes a minute. And what that does is it means that there is no standing air, no stale air. The air is always pumped, the bad air is always out, and the good air is always coming in. And it constant goes, and you never turn it off. Right? You don't turn it off to get a wee bit of painting done here or that kind of stuff. It runs all the time. And the air is always moved. Now, we still require these. Right, so can I just mention this, this one for you? Right, so activated charcoal, you get it in a sealed bag, right? As soon as you open it, it starts working. So it has an average lifetime of about three weeks. This will be depending on how much exposure to fume you get. If it's a heavy amount, it might be less than that. It's got brown, silver, yellow stroke gold, right? So I'll just read out what it does. By the way, this is good for stuff like paint and all that as well. It's on your job, right? So the markings are particulate. Uh, the gold one is for particulate solid material in an aerosol form. So that's the metallized fume, right? Uh, the, the brown one is for organic gases. So that's the paints and the oils and the petrols and all the other stuff that's been spilled all over. And this one is for, the other one is for organic gases and and, and, and fumes. So that's practically everything else, right? So it takes it away. Now, uh, <laughs> I've got to be frank with you, there is only one test that actually you can tell whether this is working or no. Uh, so it's placed about here, okay? It's a fart test, right? You only know when it's working if you don't smell the fart. Sorry to be so graphic, right? But the minute you can smell it, it's no working, and you get it. You absolutely get it changed. Okay, this one will last you, depending again on the amount of exposure. This will last you up to eight weeks. Up to eight weeks, I would be changing it every month, right? Okay, up to eight weeks. Some of you will have that and only that, and you've had it for about six months in your helmet, right? You might not even have that. Am I right? So, right, well, that's good. That's smashing that you do that because uh, I'm only saying that that works that long because it's in combination with something else, right? So uh, you change that every week, fine, but you know what? That's in its own is not enough, okay? Yeah, I know that. Right, right, in its own is not enough, right? So uh, depending on the exposure <laughs> you get, change it when you feel you should, right? Use that, what? Yeah, we've got them as well. I didn't bring them. I just assume you'd probably all seen them. I just wanted to run through this activated charcoal. So since we have made moved this into the activated charcoal, 3M and other companies are now providing this. When and this is a joint filter set, so they're available. The unfortunate thing is the last time I looked, this was thirty pound a pop, right for one of these. So I think you might get a certain amount of pushback. As I said, we had to take some action with them. So basically, with aluminium, which I'll talk about in a moment, right? Uh, we wait, they refused to give us them and all kinds of stuff. So we waited till they come to uh, their deadline dates when they basically they have to get this and they get a payment for putting it through. And they would just didn't do the job. Right? It's as simple as just didn't do the job. What are they going to do? Pies all half, right? So they crumbled and we go at them. We had to do that three times. That was my guys that done that. They just, they're not doing it. That's it. Boom, right? Okay, so sometimes you need to do that kind of stuff, and uh, we're quite fortunate as welders. I don't know if those of you are welders will notice there's a huge shortage, right? Uh, they're bringing up. <laughs> Remember how Brexit was supposed to keep the foreigners out of the country? We haven't been so many foreign workers in government. Anyway, so uh, they, they kind of get they kind of get workers for love and their money. Now I want to talk to you about aluminium, and I want to talk to you about two particular gases in particular. Is anybody in here weld aluminium? Right, so let me just talk to you about it, right? Aluminium is a severe neurotoxin. There has not been a brain in the world autopsied 
that has not that had Alzheimer's that has not shown an increased level of aluminium in it. Right? It's a severe neurotoxin. It's totally no argument about it, right? So aluminium can cause that, particularly if you're welding it and you don't have any 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 uh, any any, any, any uh, RPE with you. Right, so you've all noticed how dirty and smelly it is and all the dust and dirt that goes with it. Also causes a lung condition, a bit like the old miners' uh, lung uh, meniconiosis. This one is called aluminiosis. It's exactly the same. But actually, one of the most dangerous things with it is the amount of ozone that it produces. Right, so you've all heard about the ozone hole and how we need it. So ozone's great six miles up on the earth, right? But it's not so good for you to work to be breathing. Ozone is a form of oxygen, but it's an imbalanced form of oxygen. It's caused by the interaction with the oxygen with the ultraviolet light. It then makes, makes this unbalanced oxygen, which you can breathe in, but does no good to you whatsoever. You can't respire with it, you can't breathe with it. Right? But what it does do is cause an upper respiratory tract, which can lead to an edema disorder, right? Upper respiratory tract disorder, which can lead to an edema. In Germany, though, they regard this ozone as a mutagen, right? Which is another term for carcinogen, right? Now, as soon as you stop welding, the ozone very quickly returns to standard oxygen. But every time you strike an arc, regardless of the kind of welding that you're doing, you are in a miasma of this stuff, right? That's that funny smell you sometimes get. You will walk into the welding shop, right? That kind of strange smell, a bit, you know what I mean? It's, but, but, but no, no, the same as the, the metal fume smell. So it returns quite back to, to oxygen quite quickly. But if you're in a space where there's a bank of you, right? Or you're in a place of aluminium and you know how reflective it can be, then it's everywhere. It's bouncing off the walls been, and it's being created all over that workspace. And all the guys in there, everybody in there is getting exposed to this stuff. So you need to be aware of that. But the problem with it is, it often comes with another gas, which I mentioned earlier, nitrogen dioxide. Together, both of those gases have four times as much of a negative effect on your lungs as either of them do individually. Now, it's important to understand this. Both ozone and nitrogen dioxide are used in the food packing and food handling industries as antibacterials, right? They blast fresh fruit with ozone to kill bugs, and they store fresh fruit and vegetables in packets with nitrogen to stop bugs growing. These are both exhaust gases from the welding program, and we are breathing them in. Our white cells and microphages are single cells. They are being gassed by this stuff. Right? So I think I've outlined a fairly serious set of issues. But again, I want you to remember the fluorides from the fluxes. They turn to mild acid as well and cause problems for your immune system in your lungs, if not the, even the actual tissues of your lungs. Right, I'm struggling to remember some stuff. Does anybody want to ask me any questions? So after our welders wearing all this gear, look, the rest of us wandering around. You should be wearing gear as well. Yep. Right. So see if you're in the place. See if you're my plater. And you're waiting for me to finish that two feet of welding. You're standing there like that, waiting for me to do You're breathing that in. Right? I'm, I'm probably better protected than you because I'll bet your guys don't wear anything. Right? So even if I've got all my kit on, and my guys use their kit, the trouble is they don't use their hoses. Right? That's another thing you need to talk to them about. So if you're in that area, if you're working with these hot working trades, by the way, this is this applies to, to arc air gouging and flame cutting as well. Okay? These are all dangerous issues. These are all things we need to be aware of. <coughs> now they're going to come and say, I don't know what you're talking about. And you're going to get them. They're going to get the, 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 the your company health and safety officer try to pat you in the head and tell you, you don't know what you're talking about, I'm looking after you, right? And then you'll think, oh, I'll get the, I'll get the health and safety executive in. 
Watch it. Right? I'm sorry, guys, but I've got to be truthful. I'm an old-fashioned shop steward, right? I, I know the difference between chicken shit and chicken salad. Right? So, uh, your health and safety officer knows the HSC guy. They probably went to uni together. Right? They know each other very well. They'll be an exchange of Christmas cards. Right? They know one another very, very well. And you always have to as well with the HSC. The HSC is like the coppers, right? Good terms sometimes. Most of the time, don't bother with them, right? Make things worse. They are a government body. They are paid for by the government. They do what the government tells them. And business tells the government what it wants, right? That's why I have got hundreds of papers from all over the world. Not crank papers, no off the internet. Off a thing called uh, Science Direct, where every single scientific paper in the world, legit scientific paper, is peer reviewed and published. Sometimes you get them for nothing, sometimes you have to pay for them. Right? Anyway, I'm telling you what I know, but now I need to tell you what you can get. Right? So, those of you that work in the brickworks, have you heard of the campaign Dust Kills? Yeah. Right. Get into it again. Look at it. There's a cracking video of a guy sweeping up. Right, wearing a, wearing a helmet in it. Have a look at that, right? Go into that one and look at the Dust Kills. Whatever goes on with the Dust Kills one is applicable to welding as well. But there is a welding program uh, called Brave Freely, I think it's called, or Brave Safe, but a bit like ours. Anyway, you'll get that for the HSC. Look to see what your bare minimum is. Okay? Because most of you will probably not even be getting that. John, you know your companion. Mm -hmm. Obviously it was created and you've been a figurehead for yeah. it. Where has it been rolled to? I know it's in some trade unions. Have yeah. you got it into different workplaces? Yeah. What obstacles have you hit right. in getting through those barriers? Can I, can I, I'm going to have to be totally honest with you here. Yeah. Okay, that, right, okay. Right, so we know what's going on. And we know where guys are getting poisoned. We've known it for years. We even when the bailer makers, I'm old enough to remember that. We had a campaign for welders long. Then you have the science then to back it up. We do know. Right. Right. So look, if we go in and tell all them we want all this, they're going to have what we call in Glasgow a nanny rooney. Right? They'll, they'll have a meltdown. It's going to cost them a fortune. They don't want to do it. it. Interferes with production. Interferes with output. Safety is an impediment. Never doubt that, guys and gals. Safety is an impediment for what they actually want at the end of the day, which is shareholder value. Right? Sorry to get political on your ass, but that's the facts. Right? So in our, in our own unions, I cannot understand why the GMB has not taken me down to London and got representatives for all the, for all the manufacturing parts of it and actually sat as they're doing and run this through them. And then we come out with a booklet for our shop stewards and reps. Right? What you should be demanding, what you can get, what you can legally afford enforce. It shouldn't be doing to me running about the UK, right? Try to raise your consciousness. Right? They should be doing that. They've got plenty of money they can be getting on with. Now, I represent the Alex Ferry Foundation, which is supposed to be doing this. That that document I gave you, that was a submission I made to the Scottish Parliament, right? Uh, they have a social justice and public health committee, and that's a, that's a submission that I made to them. I gave it to you, not to bang my drum, it just saves me having to write another thing out, right? So that is the basis stuff. That's the, that's the ground level stuff that we should be demanding, right? This is what we basis is what we need, right? So that's what we need to do, but we need, we need our trade union bureaucrats, our leaders, right, to take this on board. And we need to be having a campaign on it. Look, so I'll tell you something else. See, when you're finished having your arguments about percentage wage rises and all the rest of it, which seem to be going all the time, see if you want another serious way to organise a trade union in a workplace, you can't do better than health and safety. Right? You cannot do better than health and safety. It's a good thing to do. It makes the guys and gals believe that you care about them, because you do. Right? And it helps you organise and get some credibility for us, right? 
Because you know what? See, at the end of the day, see the law, even if it's a small thing, we win it, that's major cred for us. So we should be doing that twin-track approach. Wages and conditions, health and safety, right? Now remember, we have been getting a, sorry to point team, we have been getting a heavy-duty safety regime for the last 20, 30 years. Hard tats, glasses, boots, overalls, right? Or that palaver. Not once have they addressed their health issues. Not once have they addressed their health issues and the impact of the workplace that we are in. The management regs, and if you don't know what they are, download them for the HSC and read them closely. The management regs say that they should be looking at every aspect of the job that they are asking us to do, including our mental health. You probably don't know what I mean, but we have a very horrible job very confined job called double bottoms in the yard. It's like, you ever seen the bit in Aliens when Dallas is going through the, the thing with a torch trying to find the alien before it gets him? Right, we saw so dark and all the rest of it. That's what's been in a double bottom. We've got people crawling about in there, right? In situations like that, icy, cold, or roasting hot, it's never one or the other, right? See if you're in that job for six weeks or three months, or for the whole length of the boat, the whole career of the boat, you're going to be mentally affected, but let me assure you, you're going to go in the sick, right? You're going to get sick of it and go in the sick, right? They do not take that into consideration. Length of time on jobs. Do we have a policy on musculoskeletal issues? There's hundreds of it to look at on the, 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 the HSC's website. For certain guys in my place, I've got time limitations put on jobs. Hundreds of years of shipbuilding on the Clyde. Never had a time limitation put on a job. I've got agreements for time limitations on jobs. Two hours maximum turnaround. And it's no two hours max, uh, two hours and then you go back 20 minutes later. It's two hours and you're after that job and onto a lighter job somewhere else out in the open. Right? That's the kind of thing that we should be looking at. Take a look at the place you're working in. Ask yourself, how many people have got bad backs? How many bad knees? How many people have got vibration white finger? I wanted to say that when a guy was in here about that, by the way, but I know, and I'm one of them, hundreds of people with vibration white finger in halves, right? You don't tell your management you've got it, because you know what's going to happen. You're going to be capability to out that door, right? Because they're not allowed to put you a job that's going to make you get worse, right? So you don't mention it. But they should never have got to that stage. Should never have got to the stage. I had to deal with a guy not long ago, he accused me for being indelicate, but his horns were that bad he couldn't even wipe his ass. Right? Seriously. That's the reality of workplace for many people in this country. Well paying jobs, actually, right? And sometimes we're in guys are their own worst enemies. For instance, if you look at cost regulation number seven, you see in the back, that's the one to do with the cancer. And then you look at guidance notes number AH44 on sweeping up. You shouldn't be sweeping up. Should be hoovered up. Should be hoovered up into a HEPA 14 filter. Taking it sealed and put into a sealed bound or, or, or cover. Right? And taking away and treat this toxic waste. The stuff we have gone like that way. That's killing us. See that poor boy with a with a with a silicosis earlier? Ah, we'll get a job sweeping up. It was making it worse. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? We need to start looking at these things. It's not just about the wages, though that's the prime, but it's about the conditions of work. Now, just on the stuff I'm talking about. As we're getting increasing numbers of young women coming into the trade, I had numbers of, a number of young women in, in the welding department. Really good welders, right? Trouble is the tools they were giving us, right? The buffs and the burrs. Too much talk. Too much twist. It's hurting them. They were forever breaking their wrists. Or, or, or something like that. It's too much. We need to look at getting tools in that young women can use. But we also need to be aware that some of these, talk, these things that I've been talking about are fat soluble. That means that they are stored in your tissues. And it's been absolutely proven that when a young woman has a baby and if she chooses to breastfeed, she passes on some of her toxic burden to her child. 
That's a fact. That's the reality. And what I am not suggesting is you shouldn't breastfeed because actually breastfeed is really better. And they would get it through cow's milk and all the rest of it as well because I've explained <coughs> to you, it's everywhere. But that's what happens. But there is good evidence to suggest that exposure to these materials affects your fertility for both men and women. We need some more research into that. Right. I've just about done. Does anybody want to ask me any more questions? Yes, mate. You know your fumes? Aye. Obviously, that, that's making any shit. Are you making any massive factory? Yeah, we're a huge big roof. Yeah. Aye, it's going right up there. Right, yeah. so there's a problem with this, right? So in the old days, we could, we could vent it into the air. Carry day that now, right? It's case the Clean Air Act and a whole number of other different things. What we need to do is we need to get the guys to accept that they need to use our hose. But also the facts are you're not allowed to vent that into fresh air. So even on a guy in our top deck, open deck of the boat, right, with all the weather run about them, he's not allowed to just let that fume go. Right? He's supposed to take it away with a hose, or the bulk of it, right, to take it away with a hose. Yeah, probably, most of you're not going to, you've got, you're going to going to extraction. Aye. Extraction Ongoing extraction. I'll yeah. talk to you about that, right? But they, they come with some, you ask them risk assessments, yeah. you can only risk yeah. assessments, you've got yeah. problems with bad necks, yep. shoulders. Yep. So what they've done there, mate, is they've basically, right, they've basically done, oh, let's deal with one thing, but they've made the other thing worse, right? So basically what they've done, they've given you a massive, massive, a uh, uh, mu musculoskeletal problem here, right? And it will come back, so we need to deal with that right away. Right, so they brought them into the government and they're still insisting that we use them. We call them the anaconda because it's like wrestling with an anaconda, right? Right, it's useless. The welders say it blows away their, 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 their shield as well and they get porosity all over the place. No, we need a better methodology. They need to spend money. They need to research. It's not doing it to us. It's doing it to them. They're causing this, right? That is only causing a problem. All of us who work in steel work will know that all our joints, backs, knees, all that kind of stuff, there's no a bit of me hanging the right way, to be perfectly frank, right? I mean, constant discomfort, right? And it's, <coughs> and it's because as a young man, I thought I was invincible, right? And I could jump about all over the place and do all the lift stuff, and, and, and all my mates are the same. We have to make sure we get that out of our workplaces. That needs to be removed from our everyday experience. Otherwise, young people are something they're not going to join them. Like, nobody's working in there to become an absolute... I mean, you might think your child's Atlas, but you're broken and done in the mid-50s. Right, any more? Yes, pal? Where is the Breathe Easy campaign? Because I remember many years ago, the GMB club. Uh, right. The members that was... Well, Johnny Barber was one, actually, that went on it. To be honest, Jason, he's always been sent back. None of them are brought in yet. I've been doing following this stance because you can see what John's done. He's taken something that's going to kind of work like and he's made loads of obstacles. You will hit the same obstacles, the pots will hit the same obstacles, the brick workers will hit the same obstacles. And we'll, I'll be sending that out on the email following today so people can see the video, which I saw last year. And you can use it. You can speak to your employer about it. You can bring it up through your regions. You can bring it up to your regional committee. You can raise it with your general secretary. Or, or and, you can do something that's in your workplace, which taps into the groundwork that John's done. Or create something new. But either way, you know, Maybe the trade union hasn't given enough support to this campaign. But, you know, we can reflect on that. But we've either got to pick something up and get behind it, and start to talk to employers, same as manufacturing, or you've got to pick something else up because it's about showing that your members that you care about them. <coughs> John says, so, you know, this is about bonded. But in every workplace, you go into the, the pots and the kilns and there's different things and the rubber PPE. 
going to Brickworks and you've got rust and burn is going all day in the haze under the roof and you go in. There's problems everywhere. But as as trade unionists, we're supposed to find issues, get behind them, and complain on them. The victim of your own success by the more you bring this in, it's just encouraging employees, employees to just ship it out to countries that don't give a shit about the people when you live all that. Well, that, 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 that's a very real, <coughs> that's a very real thing. But do you know what? I'm more waiting done. So, because I would, I'll get you a minute, mate, right? So it's, we had a big issue with the aluminium, right? I'm not going to bore you to tear. I managed to get a level of biological monitoring in it, right? Which is beyond what you're regarded, you're allowed by law. They've rescinded it since I've been away, right? Anyway, what they done was, because your guys just simply didn't want to do it and was causing all kinds of issues, they sent it to Germany, right? Who have got teams that actually are experts in it, and I suspect knowing their legislation, they wouldn't be getting ex exposed to the level of nonsense that, 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 that we do. So they did do that, you're absolutely right, but not all of it. But do you know, at the end of the day, we can either suck it up and you die at 60, right? And you don't see your grand wains, and you don't have a retirement. You don't spend that 10, 15 years with your wife or partner that you wanted to do, doing the trips that you always, that you always felt you could and should do. Name our arcade trails for years. Do you know that kind of stuff? Guys, if we don't do about it, we're still going to die at 75. Right? We shouldn't be dying with that. When you go to your doctors, what's the first thing he asks you? Do you still smoke? Do you still drink? How many pies and curries do you have in a week? It's not our fault we are dying in that stuff. At any point, has any of them ever asked you where you work? Have any of them ever asked you what you do? Have any of them any idea what the hell you're exposed to? We need to turn that round. Yes, mate. campaigned at JCB through health and safety committees 20 years to get extracted on all every well we said and we think we've done a decent job aye aye we've come a long way you've done as well as you knew but aye there's still a massive way to go yep hugely I, I've brought up things like in the, in the profile cutters several men died of brain cancer that's so are mine a, that's not a mm -hmm. coincidence no same with mine it's not a coincidence mm -hmm. so what I'm suggesting we all do now is take this level one stage further, but it needs to be coordinated. It needs to be coordinated through, uh, I've dealt a lot with Julie at the back, Prime, Prime Bank, mm -hmm. did a lot of fantastic work on, on the system. Mm -hmm. We're the same, we need to do it more. But we need, instead of going off individually, one at a time, yeah. much better coming yeah. collectively. Yep, so, we, so you're absolutely right. We need to get something going. Do you know what else we need to do? We need to get real scientists involved yeah. because well, I'm no any better educated than any of you, right? I left school at 16, right? We, we all grades in nothing in particular. So, so you're, you're absolutely right. And on your profile cutters, we call them probably sub arcs. I've got three guys in mine, brain tumours, exactly the same brain tumour. That's no a coincidence, right? Bear in mind, I wouldn't be shot last for seven years. Yep. That's not no, that's no good at all, right? It's no, it's no going to be easy. I'm no suggesting for a minute. Um, Aye. No, there will only be huge, huge problems with that. Aye. Sling it in the river, that's what we're doing So, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've actually had to take brooms off of guys and go like that with them, right? I fucking told you. A, I, mean, I, I can do that. I suspect most of you can as well, right? You you get to the level of convener that you generally your guys kind of respect you, otherwise you wouldn't be there. Uh, so you have to be keep going and going. Look, everything that involved in trade unionism took took two hundred years to get where we are now. Right? They put us in jail. They sent us to Australia. They hung you. They chopped your heads off. We did all kinds of stuff. Right? All kinds of stuff. 
never forget all that. That might be history, but they do that again to us in a minute, right? That's my opinion. <laughs> so it's never been easy to be a trade unionist, and and in the moment, it's no going to be any easier because I tell you what, don't be sitting waiting for the seventh cavalry to be on the hill team. Seriously, they ain't going to have to do it for yourself. The 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 the, the general ambience and mood music might be a wee bit better, but that's will be what it is, right? Right, any other else? Just one point, you know, our world is the worst own enemies. Yes, you know, and everybody else's. We've got cylinders, <laughs> 20, 20 foot long. I'm a plater, so I ain't got the gear on. Uh -huh. You know, and we've got extract, they've all covered up, we've got everything that they can get. They're not bothered about those platers. No. That extraction will stay there while they, they're already got that in. You know what I mean? They don't even bring it down with them. See the welder? Monday, 1965, where the Martindale Mass. Yeah, oh God. Aye, Martindale Mass and, yeah. and, and, and cotton wheel earplugs, yeah. aye. Listen, the welders think he's all right because he's using this, right? And he's no getting a black snorter anywhere. But as I've said to you, there's 80 billion particles in a cubic metre of, 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 of welding fume. Most of it you can't see, and most of it this isn't catching, right? Okay, we'll be finished there.